Okay, this next example is a parametric equation, but it involves uh, sines and cosines. And we also have some values for t that are here. These are going to be values coming from the unit circle. Now I drew a unit circle up here that ref uh, corresponds to the values for t. So t is an angle in this case, so I have 0, and then I have pi over 2 is 90 degrees, that's this point. This one over here refers to pi. This one down here, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi comes back to uh, the original starting point. So each of these, I'm going to have to refer to this unit circle in order to get the value. The cosine refers to the x-coordinate on the unit circle. The sine refers to the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So for instance, when I do the first point right here, I have 4 times the cosine is 0. So I need to look at here to get the cosine at 0. Now that means it's asking for the x value at 0 degrees. The x value at 0 degrees, that's 1 uh, from our uh, unit circle here. So I have 4 and then I'm putting in a 1 because a 1 would be the, that's the x coordinate right here and that's, that's where I got the 1 from. And now you get 4 there. So that means that 4 is the x-coordinate for my whole entire parametric uh, graph that I'm going for here. Next, I'm going to do 2 times sine of 0. Okay, so we, we have the same spot on the inner circle. That's the 0 degrees. That's right here. But this time, you're going to refer to the y-coordinate there, and the y-coordinate there is 0. So you're going to do 2 times 0, and you get 0 there. So now, you get 4 comma 0. That's the first point that we're going to be actually plotting when we get to the graph of this here in a second. 4 cosine pi over 2. So now we're moving on to pi over 2. That's 90 degrees there. The x coordinate there is 0. So this is going to be 4 times 0, or 0 we get. So 0 is the first part of this, coordinate, this next coordinate. Next, we do 2 sine pi over 2. Pi over 2 is the y value at 90 degrees. That's 1. So this is going to be 2 times 1, or 2. So now the next coordinate we get is 0, 2. That's where it moves to. So it goes from 4, 0 to 0, 2. Then we're going to do, put in pi, 4 cosine pi. All right, now cosine pi, that's the x coordinate at 180 degrees. That's negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 will give you negative 4. So now that's going to be this one here. Then we have 2 sine of pi, that's going to be the y value at 180 degrees, that's 0. So that's going to be 2 times 0, and you get 0. So now I have negative 4, 0 is the next coordinate. Moving on down, we have 4 cosine 3 pi over 2. Okay, 3 pi over 2 is this spot on the unit circle. We're asking for the cosine value. The cosine value of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So I have 4 times 0 is the value that comes off of my unit circle. I get a 0. Okay. Then I have 2 sine 3 pi over 2. And that's going to be 2 times uh, uh, th sine of 3 pi over 2. That's the y value of 3 pi over 2. That's negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. So now I have 0, negative 2 is my next coordinate. Finally, I have cosine of 2 pi. Now, cosine of 2 pi, 2 pi is exactly the same thing as what we started with here at 0. So actually, I'm going to have exactly the same answers for each one of those. So this is going to be 4 times 1, which is 4. And then I have 2 sine of 2 pi. That's the same thing as 2 times 0 equals 0. It's the same exact coordinate as 0, so that's why we get the same coordinates. You're, you're basically looking at the same spot on the unit circle as when we had 0 degrees. So now I have uh, 4 comma 0 is our coordinate on this one. So now here's all your points. We have all those. So now we're going to erase this and go ahead and put the, the graph up there now. And the graph uh, should be something familiar that you've seen before. You might already have guessed what kind of graph we should get. Uh, from this one, but let's go ahead and plot it just to make sure. All right, so I have 4 comma 0. So 4 comma 0 is right here. Next I have 0, 2. 0, 2 comes up here. And then I have negative 4, 0. Negative 4, 0 is right here. That's the next point. So notice that the points are actually going this direction. They're going counterclockwise. Then I have 0, negative 2, which is here. 
and then it goes back to 4-0 again, back to where we started from. So what kind of graph do we have? It's an, we actually have an ellipse here. We have an ellipse and it's going this direction, it's going counterclockwise. It's spinning around this way. So again, parametrics, so you need to make sure you put the direction arrow on it so you know which way it's going. But basically we have an, an ellipse here. Okay, so then we're gonna talk about now what is gonna what are we gonna do as far as the equation is concerned? Okay, well when we eliminate the parameter, okay, here's the original equations. We have uh, we have four cosine t and y was two sine t. There's two different approaches that you can take in order to eliminate the parameter here. The first one is just simply write down the equation of the ellipse itself. So that goes back to a previous session we talked about when we did the ellipses. This is an ellipse that opens up sideways that's centered at zero, zero. So the basic equation for that is gonna be this one right here. So remember with ellipses, the larger number has to go underneath the variable where it's opening up to. So since it opens up left and right, it's opening in the x direction, we got the larger number is gonna be underneath the x. So here's our basic formula that we're gonna start with. And then what I wanna do is just read the a and b values off the graph itself. a is the distance from the center to the vertice. That's gonna be four. So I can go ahead and put four squared in there, that's gonna be 16. Then this squared here, that's two in the other direction, your b is two, so two squared is gonna give you four. So right here, there it is, that's, our, that's the equation, that's what the parameter eliminated, there's no more t's in here. That would actually be the answer that you would put here. Now, supposing that you didn't know anything about ellipses and you wanted to do this more algebraically, the book actually shows this second process. All right, so what they said is they actually solve for cosine t and sine t separately. So if I solve for cosine t, I would divide both sides by four and I would get this. Then I can also divide both sides by two and get sine by itself, so that would be y over two. So we start by solving for cosine and sine. Now why do we do that? Because we can make use of this identity, cosine squared plus sine squared t equals one. So if we, if we use this identity, we already have cosine and sine solved for already, so therefore we can go ahead and stick both of these in there. What would you get? X over four squared plus Y over two squared. So now that we have that, that if, we, if we square both of those, we get exactly the same answer as this one. So again, you can do that both ways. You can either write the, direction, or write the formula directly from the uh, ellipse and get that, or again, we can do this more algebraic process. So either way, you're gonna get the same exact answer when you eliminate the parameter.